So, here we have a question. Derive the nth term of the sequence 3, 13, 27, 45, and then carrying on. So the first thing we need to do is work out what sort of sequence it is. So we tend to do that by first looking to see if it's a linear sequence. Okay, so we do that by looking for the first difference. Now, each of these terms is given by u with the subscript. So u1, the first term, equals 3. u2 is the second term, which is 13. u3 is the third term, which is 27. And u4 is the fourth term. And there are many terms after that, an infinite number of terms, but we're only concerned with those at the moment. So the way to do this, first off, let's see if it's a linear sequence. So to do that, we're going to look for the common difference. Now, we know that for the definition of a general term, we have un, where n is the number that indicates the position within the sequence. So here we have n is 1, here we have 2, here we have 3, here we have 4. Okay, And un equals 3, 13, 27, 45. Now, the first thing we're going to do then, as I said, look for the first difference, because we know there's a common first difference. This is a linear sequence or a power 1 sequence. So 3 to 13, the difference is plus 10. 13 to 27, the difference is plus 14. 27 to 45, the difference is plus 18. So D1, the first difference isn't common, so we know it's not a linear power 1. So now let's have a look to see, is it a power 2? So to see that, we see, is the second difference common? So the second difference is the difference between the first differences. Okay, so between plus 10 and plus 14 is plus 4. Between plus 14 and plus 18 is plus 4. Okay, so with the three or four terms we've got, we can see now that the second difference is common. This means it's a power 2, okay, or index 2 sequence, which is also called a quadratic sequence. Okay, quadratic sequence. So sometimes you're given that, and the question says, derive the nth term of this quadratic sequence. Other times you have to find out that it's quadratic first. Now, a quadratic sequence has a general form of the form an squared plus bn plus c. So it's our old friend, the quadratic equation. Uh, quadratic expression, except instead of x's, we use n's, okay? And n is the position in the sequence. Now, the first thing we can do, or first thing we know, is that one of the properties of a quadratic sequence is that a, the first coefficient of the n squared term, is calculated as half of the second difference. Okay. Now, if you want to know why that is, you can work it out by creating four or maybe five general terms. Okay. So what I mean by that is use an squared plus bn plus c, but put n is 1, n is 2, n is 3, n is 4, and so on. And then work out what the terms are as expressions, and then you can work out what a is, and that will give you half of the second difference. But we're not going to do that, we just assume that, and it's something you're supposed to know. So if that's the case, we know that a is half of the second difference. And the second difference was 4, so that means a is 2. So we can now describe the first term. So we know a is 2, so it's 2n squared plus bn plus c. So we've got the first term of our quadratic sequence, 2n squared. Now, the next bit is where we have two different methods, and we're going to use the simultaneous equations method here, okay? So, we know the general term is given by 2n squared plus bn plus c. So, what do we have? We have two unknowns, okay? We have a b and we have a c. Now, when we have two unknowns, if we wish to find out what they are, solve them, we create what's called a system of equations, and which we solve simultaneously at the same time. Now, to do that, systems of equations require the same number of equations as there are unknowns or variables to be solved. So we need to find out what b and c is, so we need two equations. 
Now this might seem a bit confusing until you realize that the general term we've got, un equals 2n squared plus bn plus c, describes any of the four terms we were given originally, so 3, 13, 27, and 45. We also know what the n value is for them. 3n is 1, 13n is 2, 27n is 3, 45n is 4. So we can use any two of those to create our two equations. As an example, if we want the second one, for instance, so the second one, we have n is 2, Okay, uh, wrong colour yet again. I do hate this. Okay. Oops, there you go. So, the second term, we know n is 2, and we know un equals 13. And then we'll use, and it doesn't matter which one you use, so we'll use the third one. Okay, so the third one, n must be 3, and un must be 27. Okay, so we're going to create two equations that describe those two instances. Oh, right, and we're going to use the general form un equals 2n squared plus bn plus c. So off we go. So 2n squared, we have 2. Now we know for the first one, n is 2. So there you go, squared plus b. We know n is 2 plus c. And we know the second term is 13. So there's a first equation, and then similarly, we use the general term, but this time n is 3. So a squared plus b, 3, plus c, equals this time, it's 27. Now, let's sort these out first. So we'll multiply everything we want, we can. So 2 squared is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, so we've got 8 plus 2b plus c equals 13. And the one below it, well, 3 squared is 9, so we've got 18, 2 times 9 is 18, yeah, plus 3b plus c equals 27. Okay, now, solve simultaneously, we need to eliminate one of the variables. The c's are the same, they have the same coefficient, so we'll rearrange so c is on the same side for each of them. So c equals, we've got 13, take away 8, 13 take away 8 is 5, take away 2b, because we've moved that to the other side. 27 take away 18, well that's 9. Okay, take away 3b. So there we have, we've got those set up now. So we know that if c equals c, then these have to equal that which means we can bring them down here, okay, and we can say 5 minus 2b equals 9 minus 3b, okay, so rearrange, so which is the smallest value of b, that one, negative 3b, so we're going to move it that way, so we're going to move the other number that way, which gives us 3b take away 2b, equals 9 minus 5, so therefore b equals 4. Okay, so there's our b equals 4. Then we're going to substitute that back in to one of the equations up here. So b equals 4, doesn't matter which one, pick the easiest one, I suppose. There you go. So if we do that, stick it up here. So we have c equals 5 minus 2 times b, b is 4. So c equals 5 minus 8, which means c equals negative 3. And that's our third coefficient. So now we can put a, b, and c together and create our nth term. So that means what we have is a lovely, the nth term for this sequence is 2n squared plus 4n minus 3. And remember, once we've got it, we should always check. So let's check to see if it works if one of the terms we haven't used. So if we go back up here, we see, what have we got? Uh, or up, there's the fourth term should give us 45 if this is correct. So does the fourth term give us 45? So let's have a look. So does the fourth term give us 45? So 2 times 4 squared plus 4 times 4 minus 3. So is that true? So 
let's have a look. 45 equals 4 squared is 16. 2 16s are 32. Plus 16. Take away 3. 45 equals 45. So yes, it does. So therefore, we must have the correct nth term. And that is maths magic.